A good afternoon, I'm Reverend Rosalind Hambly, and I welcome you to Midweek Spiritual Nuggets from the Bethlehem and Faith Moravian Congregations in Barbados. We thank you for joining us via Facebook or YouTube as we pause in the middle of the week at this midday hour to reflect on some nuggets of truth from God's Word. This week, sharing with us is Sister Michelle Williams, a member of the Bethlehem Congregation. Michelle marks a very significant milestone tomorrow, and in recognition of God's favor on her for half a century, she has decided to share with the rest of us from his word. Welcome, Michelle. I share with you the daily text for Wednesday, November 17, 2021. The watchword reads, Let the one who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 10. The hymn writer says, To God who gave the scriptures, we bring our thanks today. For light upon life's journey, a lamp to lead the way. A sword to face the tempter, a seed of life divine. A glimpse of heaven's glory upon our souls to shine. The doctrinal text. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 19. The supporting him verse, How bright appears the morning star, with mercy beaming from afar, the host of heaven rejoices. O righteous branch, O Jesse's rod, O son of man and son of God, we too will lift our voices. Jesus, Jesus, holy, holy, yet most lowly, now draw near us. Great Emmanuel, kindly hear us. Let us pray. Lord of light, we claim to put our trust in you, and yet we still find ourselves isolated in the darkness of destruction. Focus our eyes on the dawn of your new day and better way. Indeed, Lord, help us this day to focus our, light, our eyes on you, so that as we turn our eyes on Jesus, the things of the world may grow strangely dim in the light of your glory, your grace. We thank you for all of your blessings upon us. And I pray this day, Lord, that as we reflect on your word, you would speak through your servant, Misha. Grant her your divine wisdom. Anoint her, O Lord, that she may deliver your message to your people. Grant then that our lives may move towards transformation as we hear from your word what you would call us to do and who you would call us to be. We give you thanks for Sister Michelle and for her message shared with us this day. In Jesus' name, Amen. Today's scripture reading is Romans chapter 3, verses 21 to 25. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. 
God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite Sister Michelle to share with us now what God has laid on her heart as his message to his people at this time. God bless you as you speak to us now, Sister Michelle. Greetings, sisters, brothers, family, and friends. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life when the clouds unfold their wings of strife? When the strong tides lift and the cables stream, will your anchor drift or firm remain? Let us pray. Majestic and all-knowing Father, thank you for your gift of life. For this is the day that you have made, and we will be glad and rejoice in it. Father God, be with me as this message is delivered to all. Your word tells us for those who have ears to hear, let them hear. On harden our hearts, may we receive your word, telling others of your goodness and love. For your words give life. God, our glory belongs to you. Speak through me, and may our hearts all be receptive to receive your word and instruction. Amen. Friends and family, I trust that my singing did justice to the song. The word of God says to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, and that I did. Amen. Is your anchor holding in these times? The songwriter says to us, in times like this, we need a savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grip the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Do you have an anchor in Jesus? If you do, it says that you know God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise God. Family so then. How anchored are you? So grounded that you have a personal relationship with Jesus, living a life surrendered to God's will and instruction? Are we anchored at the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, being committed to God and his statues, willing to die for God and declaring publicly, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's? Also like Daniel while in the lion's den, no compromise and praying three times a day, knowing that God can shut any lion's mouth and he is with us. So then, brothers and sisters, what can separate us from God? Romans chapter 8 verse 35 asks the question, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress? or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Can we take the bad report of the doctor? Loss of job and your income is down to zero? Homelessness and starting from scratch? Fear? COVID-19 and the loss of a loved one? Matthew chapter 8 verses 38 and 39 says, for I am persuaded that neither death, death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Trusting in God and taking comfort in his words, Call upon the name of Jesus while he is near. Friends in Christ, we oftentimes speak of or recall the soul turn to Paul's transformation on that Damascus Road experience. The book of Acts, 
chapter 22. Saul saw the light and had the chain through Jesus. Verse 6 reads, As I was on the road approaching Damascus about noon, a very bright light from heaven suddenly shone down around me. Saul's prior life was one of persecution of God's people. In that, he was convinced what he was doing was right. Acts 22 and verse 4 says, And I persecuted the followers of the way, hounding some to death, arresting both men and women, and throwing them in prison. Does anyone have a testimony of how God changed that lying and cheating spouse, gambling addicted aunt, or weary child? Only the blood of Jesus can wash away our sins. Receiving and seeing God through new eyes, not physical eyes, Paul's later testimony and confession was, For I know that as you pray for me, and the Spirit of Jesus Christ help me, this will lead to my deliverance. For I fully expect and hope that I will never be ashamed, but I will continue to be bold for Christ as I have been in the past. And I trust that my life will bring honor to Christ, whether I live or die. For to me, living means living for Christ, and dying is even better. Philippians chapter 1, verses 19 to 21. If God can change Saul, he can change you. He has changed me. For his word says in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 5, verses 32, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Spiritual transformation through God. Are you ready to be changed? Before a doubt, there's nothing too hard for God. Family, a Christ anchored, a life anchored in God means placing your trust and faith in Him. For those things not pleasing to God or being outside of God's will for our lives, we do no longer. No magic to our behavioral change. We need to purpose in our hearts to be deliberately and consistently committed to the things of God. Think back to before becoming born again, which is an ongoing walk with God. This does not mean a life free of trials and tribulations, no get out of jail free card. Before the change, we found ourselves, ourselves engaging in things unwholesome and ungodly. What about gossiping before, after, and during church? Stealing, selfish motives, jealousy, and greed at any cost. How can we become anchored in change, making that shift in Christ and mindset? Family in Christ and all persons hearing this message, we need to take off the all those things that put a distance between us and God. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 and 21 in New Living Translation tells us clearly, when you follow the desires of your own sinful nature, the result is very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish motive, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, while parties and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. May God help us. My friends, yes my friends, the change and renewal of mindset comes only through Christ Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verses 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. 
my friends, put it on the new man, the word of God says, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and through holiness. Ephesians 4 and verse 24. What does the new man look like? Galatians 5 verses 22 and 23 in the New Living Translation says, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Let us submit ourselves to God and fall on our knees, asking for forgiveness from our sins. Our cry should be, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Psalms 51 and verse 7 and verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. A life anchored in God brings hope. Romans chapter 8 verses 24 For we are saved by hope. Hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man saith, what does he yet hope for? In the New Living Translation says, We are given this hope when we are saved. Hope in the only one who loves us unconditionally. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16. Amen. Family in Christ and people of the world, hope in the one who will supply all your needs. Hope in the one who is always with us. As God was with Moses, he is with us today in the year 2021. In the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 5 reads, They shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And Isaiah Chapter 46 and verse 4 reads, I will be your God throughout your lifetime. Until your hair is white with age, I made you, I will care for you, I will carry you along and save you. God is with us today. Trust his promises. Above all and more importantly, Hope in the only one who is the way and offers eternal life. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 14 and verse 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Friends, now is the time, if you haven't given your life to God, Give him today, for it will be the best decision of your life. The words of Jesus, I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over the ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. My great physician heals the sick, the lost he came to save. For me his precious blood he shed, for me his life he gave. I need no other argument, I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died, and that he died for me. Let us set your affections on things above and not on things on earth. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Choose life in Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Father of creation, oh, for the wonderful love you have promised, promised for you and for me. Though we have sinned, you have mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling on sinners, come home. Forgiving God, we have found a friend in you, and because you live, we can face tomorrow. Forgive us of our sins. Help us to remain faithful to you as we walk in the path of righteousness. May we build our faith on a strong foundation which only can happen through you. Jehovah our Redeemer, you are the light in this darkness world. We confess and repent of our sins. May we always speak your truth and seek to be anchored in your loving arms of mercy and grace. Hear this my prayer. I love you, Lord, and be with us all. Amen and amen. Be blessed with the song, by the song, will your anchor hold. God bless us all. Thank you, Sister Michelle, for sharing with us those nuggets of truth from God's word today. Michelle quoted from Romans chapter 8, verses 38 to 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Indeed, as you find and live the transformed life in Christ, then you can be confident that nothing will be able to separate you from the love of God. And you will be able to hold on to that blessed hope to recognize that in Christ we can have the victory. And so, Michelle, thanks again. And to you, may you strive to walk with your Lord, being a new creature in him. Before we go, here are a few reminders for you. Our Bible study continues tonight at 7.15 via our video conferencing platform. We continue our look at 1 Corinthians, and tonight we take a look at chapter 4. So we urge you to read up so that we can participate in discussion together on God's Word. We remind you that our Harvest Festival at Bethlehem comes off next Sunday coming, November 21st at 10 a.m. We invite you to come and share with us in this special occasion when we look to say thank you to God for all of his blessings toward us. As you seek to share with us, you can be in sanctuary with us or follow us online as the Harvest Festival will be streamed via our Facebook pages, Bethlehem Moravian Church or Faith Moravian Church Barbados, as well as our YouTube channel, Bethlehem and Faith Moravian Pastorate. We also invite you to place your orders by tomorrow for our special sweet treats for the occasion, conkeys, coconut bread, corn, cake, 
you may contact Sister Diana, Sister Lena, or Sister Eudora to place your orders. We also invite you to bring and make your other contributions, your other harvest gifts of produce, uh, vegetables, other food items, uh, other items altogether as we look towards sharing these with our shut-in members and other members of the community as we seek to be God's instrument in this way, helping others who may need that support. Our Sunday Divine Worship experiences continue weekly at 8 a.m. at Faith Moravian Church in Six Row St. Philip and at 10 a.m. at the Bethlehem Moravian Church in Maxwell Christ Church. We look forward to sharing with you on these occasions as well as our Sunday online services at 10 a.m. via Facebook and YouTube. Join us again next Wednesday for another finding of midweek spiritual nuggets. And join the Moravian Church Barbados Conference for our radio broadcast, Moravian Voice, on Life 97.5 FM at 8 p.m. on Wednesdays. Thank you so much again, Sister Misha, for sharing with us today. And uh, we congratulate you and wish you God's richest blessing as you celebrate your birthday tomorrow. May you indeed enjoy the experience of sh sharing this significant milestone. May God bless you all richly and may you have a blessed week. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, we thank you for this occasion of looking into your word. We thank you for your servant, Sister Misha. And even as she celebrates, we pray your special blessing upon her. We thank you for the reminder that we are called to be transformed in you, to be new creatures walking according to your will. Strength, strengthen our resolve, O Lord, to follow you in this manner. Lift us up when we stumble. Keep us on your path. And grant that as we do so, we may experience your rich blessings, your victory, and the assurance of life eternal with you. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>